anything? Hey, um, Patrick, I was just near near you, sort of nearer to you, because I was in Italy. Um, That's like right that next to France. Is absolutely. Uh, I was waving. Didn't you? Didn't you see me? No, the Apennines got in the way. I couldn't see you. Ah. Oh. Gosh darn it. Sorry. They always do that. Is it's that, so annoying. You, is it Apennines or Apennines? How do you say it? It's uh, it's whatever you want. <laughs> You're American. You can mispronounce it however you want. <laughs> It'll all be wrong. <laughs> hey, it's good to be back. Thank you for filling in. Uh, uh, my pleasure. Um, I was... So I was... I, I did a um, Q&A for my French... Uh, audience mm -hmm. uh, on Sunday and I was uh, actually telling them about my you know um, hosting of the Daily Tech News show and that what I was saying was I've been doing podcasting for like eight years and I've hosted shows in French and English and everything <laughs> coming on to host the Daily Tech News show for some reason I was like completely terrified really it was nerve-wracking oh yeah no. i was i was i couldn't sleep but like well maybe not that much but okay like I, I, I could make me feel I bad. could physically feel the relief when I was, you know, the first uh, show went well. I was like, oh, oh good. All right. I didn't mess up Tom's <laughs> shows too bad. Tom's show no, too you guys bad. did great. I was, you uh, didn't even listen to the shows yet. No, but I'm know. looking at the feedback. I, I did see Friday's show and I, I listened to a bit of Tuesday's show. So you purposefully avoided my shows? Uh, no, I I, li I did Friday's <laughs> show because we were we were just there and it was late and we didn't have anything else to do and I was like I'm gonna watch the show, uh, and then Tuesday was because of the Apple announcement. I just wanted to, you know, I was tuned in anyway like everybody else. So, yeah. Um, but no, it was uh, it was universally good feedback. So we should actually do this show though. Probably that is an excellent suggestion. <laughs> All right, that's why I knew it would be good. You you would come back exactly. Here we go. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you at patreon.com slash ace detect. Offer void where prohibited. Your mileage may vary. Product may contain nuts. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, September 15th, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me is Patrick Beja, host of La Rendezvous Tech and DTNS contributor official. Is that my, my official title now? We can negotiate it. You can pick whatever uh, you want. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, uh, but no, this is your, your, you filled in a couple of times for me last week while I was on vacation. So thank you very I much did. again for that. And in fact, thanks to everybody who filled in uh, last week. You guys were amazing. Uh, and I'm flattered and impressed and pleased beyond relief that uh, it all went well and the audience <laughs> that, that, all that it didn't completely explode <laughs> <laughs> that, no and the audience seemed to love it i got all, all kinds of great feedback from folks saying you didn't miss a beat so thank you man i appreciate it my immense pleasure uh also uh this is your first official you are now part of dtns show oh my god oh, i'm all nervous <laughs> oh don't be it's uh, no we it's, are, yeah we are it's, gonna make you read headlines yeah, that that I was expecting. But yeah, it's super exciting and I'm sure it's going to go super well. And uh, I hope people are going to appreciate it and, and be happy. So uh, let's get going. Let's do it. Microsoft announced this morning that it is, in fact, acquiring the makers of Minecraft, Mojang, or Mojang, uh, if, if you want to mispronounce it in Swedish like I just did, for $2.5 billion. On Xbox.com, Microsoft's Phil Spencer wrote that the company plans to continue to make Minecraft available across competing platforms. Mojang founder Notch, a.k.a. Marcus Pershing, Carl Manna, and Jacob Porcer will not stay with the company. The deal is expected to close by the end of the year. That's going to be our main topic of discussion later for me and Patrick. It is the Monday after a new iPhone went on sale, which means it's time for Apple to announce how the sales broke records and outran their supplies, causing delays in shipments. CNET reports Apple announced Monday that uh, first-day pre-orders of the iPhones topped 4 million in the first 24 hours, setting a record and outpacing initial supplies, causing shipping delays until October. I'm shocked, Patrick. <laughs> what is happening? Do we actually know that, I mean, I don't keep up with all these specific numbers, but do we actually know 4 million in the first 24 hours is actually a record? I believe, I believe it is. Uh, I, I, yeah. They, they report the numbers differently. I think it was 9 million over the first three days for the 5S and the 5C together. Yeah. Uh, but you can, you can count 
that four million probably beats that. And Apple says it's a record. Why not believe them? It's going to be a record every time until no one cares about the iPhone anymore. Um, yeah. And I'll be honest, I did try to order one, but I didn't try very hard. And because I didn't try very hard, it failed. And by the time I, you know, when it fails, they don't tell you. They just like, hey, your order might have failed. We don't know. I'll send you an email if it worked, <laughs> which means that you're not going to get it. Uh, and and so by that time that I went back and got it to work, it was like going to ship in October. I'm like, forget it. I'm, I'm not that into this phone. I, I was just mm. doing it because I wanted to have it on launch day so I could talk about it. And since I can't get it on launch sure. day, I don't care. I think I'm going to get a Moto X. Hmm. Yeah, Moto X, I, I, I think I might want to get a Moto X on top of it as well, just because I, I want to have a little bit of knowledge about Android. Maybe I will, I don't know. But I did uh, uh, get up early and uh, order uh, successfully order an iPhone 6 because my 4S is getting a little bit old. So oh, 4S, yeah. See, I'm, I'm on a yeah. 5, so I'm one ahead of you already. Yeah. Maybe I'll just wait another yeah. year. See what comes out. Yeah. Uh, GigaOM reports Google announced new manufacturers of entry-level Android 1 devices as the handsets in that program to go on sale in India. Android One devices are affordably priced and they have to meet minimum standards, things like a four and a half inch screen, five megapixel camera, although Google helps source the parts, which keeps the prices down for people, as well as striking deals with carriers for free data for things like Android updates and app downloads. Uh, Monday saw the Micromax Canvas A1. Micromax is the big Indian supplier. Uh, the Spice Dream Uno and the Carbon Sparkle 5, all around 6,400 rupees. That's about $105 US, uh, go on sale. And then uh, new manufacturers announced Acer, Alcatel, Asus, HTC, Intex, Lava, Lenovo, Panasonic, and Zolo are all on board for future Android One devices. The next wave of rollouts will expand Indonesia, Philippines, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Sri Lanka by the end of the year. So that's an interesting one. I mean, Android One is interesting as, a, as it stands, but it's also interesting that Google is getting such a tight relationship with the service providers and sort of getting the kind of control that Apple is getting uh, with the uh, iPhone. And uh, in, in the sense of the uh, interface and the apps installed and everything. Well, and, and the controlling is, the supply chain. That's Apple's exactly. biggest advantage. And, and Google's trying to figure out how to do that while still allowing multiple manufacturers. It's clever. And the thing is, they are uh, really sitting on the margins where they can do that because they make money on advertising. Mm -hmm. The service mm -hmm. providers can do that because they make money selling you the service. The question becomes, what will the other manufacturers who have to rely on the margins to make money, uh, how are they going to handle that? It's, uh, it's an interesting situation right now. Yeah, for sure. And this is the big growth market, so they need yeah. to be in there. Remember the good old days of last week when Apple gave everyone with an iTunes account a free album for one of the world's biggest rock bands to promote the iPhone 6? Remember how much people complained because of a free album because a free album was automatically downloaded to their devices without their permission? According to the BBC, Apple has, has now given users a special tool to remove U2's Songs of Innocence, available at iTunes.com slash SOI dash remove. <laughs> also, this is why we can't have nice things. It, uh, yeah. I, it's, it's the lesson whatever. of the internet, man. No, you it's, always I mean, they... ask permission first. <laughs> exactly. Always. You don't yeah. give people things without their permission. <laughs> You don't. No, but I mean, it's, a, it's easy to make fun of. I, I, it feels invasive. It feels a little bit intrusive. And I understand why all the fuss. The only legitimate objection that, and there is a legitimate objection, I, sh I should say, which is if I'm on a limited data plan and I'm not expecting this big album mm -hmm. and it suddenly starts downloading because I have iTunes set to download my yeah, purchases and I yeah, know that I don't the... make purchases, then mm -hmm. suddenly I'm, I'm upset because you've just used a chunk of my data for the month that I wasn't planning on using. It does, uh, yeah, that's true, but I don't, it doesn't feel like that's the reason people were upset. It, yeah. it's, to me, it feels more like, you know, th having that album delivered, it's nice, but it's like someone breaks into your house and puts an album on your desk and you're like, well, all right, that's that's nice. But I mean, dude, come on. And I think that's my desk cannot point, handle right? the weight of that huge album. <laughs> exactly. You got right. it precisely. Tom. Uh, the Verge reminds us today, September 15th is the last day to file responses to comments regarding the U.S. FCC's proposed open Internet guidelines. And the FCC press secretary announced that 
even before the day is done, they have now received more than 3 million comments. The Sunlight Foundation analyzed 800,000 of the earlier comments and found that around two-thirds of them asked the FCC to reclassify broadband, while about 5% opposed tighter regulations. After comments close tonight, the FCC will use them to decide on a final proposal, which Tom Wheeler hopes to pass by the end of 2014. It's so beyond the obvious uh, Janet Jackson uh, nip slip joke. Right, because it's can twice be the number, as our exactly. producer Jenny Josephson pointed out. <laughs> it would be as if there were two nipple slips. Um, beyond that, it seems like uh, it's a huge amount of comments and it would be difficult oh, they, they're taking them in now but it seems like it would be difficult to the F for the FTC and Tom Wheeler to not act at all or not to not acknowledge them at all in their proposals now so it might have actually done some good we'll see well I don't again Reclassifying broadband might well be maybe a good not way. that far, but well, and that's what most of these say. So if you mm. follow what these say, then that's what you should do. And I'm not sure if that's the right path or not. Uh, yeah, I feel but, like they were but, asking but I mean, the wrong question from the beginning. I guess that's my hesitation. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. Uh, time for some news from you. These are folks uh, posting stuff on our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. We thank them for getting in there and posting things. You can join them. It's easy. You join subreddit and you post. Uh, even if you don't want to post things, you can just vote on what the people in there have posted, and that affects the creator lineup on the show. Cosmic Vibes posted an Inquisitor story about Comcast threatening to disconnect Tor users. Uh, I'm not going to refer to that one, though, because a later Ars Technica story quotes Comcast spokesperson Charlie Douglas saying that this story is wildly inaccurate. Customers are free to use their Xfinity service to visit any website or use it however they wish otherwise. Douglas added, we have found no evidence that these conversations took place, the ones apparently about blocking Tor. And the vice president of Internet Communications and Engineering at Comcast, Jason Livingood, wrote in a blog post today, our customers or at any time as I have myself. Uh, now you could say, oh, Comcast can say whatever they want. I don't believe them. But we aren't seeing a lot of people come forward saying they were threatened with having their tour blocked. And this is not the usual Comcast apology and backtracking we've seen lately. When the, when the tapes came out of people, you know, Veronica Belmont and Ryan Block talking to customer service, Comcast immediately said, nope, that's wrong. We don't, we don't agree with that. Maybe because there's no tapes. I don't know. But it sounds like this is not actually a solid story. Yeah, it seems like it might have been a couple of people that were angry and uh, that were analy analyzing traffic or something or trying to get on tour and it didn't work. And then they, the, because there is such a negative uh, 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 cloud of internet hatred around Comcast, it, it, Comcast, it, it sort of... Got, the story went farther than it should have if it was I, properly... Yeah, I feel like maybe one or two people ran afoul of something else mm besides yeah. tour and then got a hold of some bad uh, representatives which would not be unusual for Comcast who didn't understand the problem and and maybe did tell them you can't use tour but I don't think Comcast awesome, is trying yeah. to crack down on tour habitual mm. um, con dulce damn that's difficult it, to say I can, it's a little bit fun to see you no, stumble over I a can, foreign word no, I'm just saying no, no, no. it's habitual con dulce Habi habitual con dulce yeah. Submitted, <laughs> fair, good enough. Submitted a Time magazine report about the Chinese city of Chongqing, uh, which has come up with a way to remind its 20 million residents about the dangers of looking down at the fo at their phones while walking. The city used uh, white paint to divide the sidewalks of its entertainment district in two lanes: one for people walking while using cell phones, and one for all the other people. A Chinese official said the markings were designed to protect elderly people and children from unnecessary collisions, as opposed to the necessary collisions, but clarified that the, initiatives was, uh, the initiative was designed to be satirical. Um, that's, that's fun, obviously. What struck me, though, is this city of Chongqing, which I'm not sure a lot of people, uh, a lot of us have heard about, that has 28 million residents. That's enormous, and that gives you a, scale, a sense of scale for China. 20 million resident city is like this city that we don't really hear about. So anyway, that's what I got out of it. Yeah, because I, I think the bigger part of this story is that Nong Cheng, who's the spokeswoman for the district's property management company, uh, admitted that this was a satirical way. That to, to, I think that's hilarious. That a, that a, a you know even if it's not a government institution, it's a property management company. Uh, still, that they they went so far as to paint a lane 
on the sidewalk. Apparently, the inspiration came from a National Geographic uh, article which created similar divisions on a section of pavement in Washington, D.C. in July uh, as part of a behavioral experience, part of a TV show in that case. But interesting. Hmm. Captain Kipner submitted the TechCrunch article about Netflix finally launching in France, Patrick. Woohoo! You can subscribe for seven euros ninety nine per month. Eight euros ninety nine per month gets you HD streaming as well as two. Eleven euros ninety nine gets you four K streaming and four simultaneous streams, which pretty much means it gets you four simultaneous streams because there's almost nothing <laughs> streaming in four K. Uh, but the selection is thin at launch too. They have some movies. None of the movies can be uh, more recent than three years because of a French law, and they're not even. They don't even have House of Cards for the French Netflix because they already sold yeah. those rights to Canal Plus. Yep. Yeah. It's a uh, well. I, I still subscribe. I mean, it's the first free month, but still, and uh, it works really well. Uh, I watched a little bit of Breaking Bad and uh, stuff like that just to test it out. Um, it works really well. The really interesting thing about the French market in this case, though, is that basically, unlike in the U.S., we have set top boxes. We all have set top boxes, and uh, those come through our ISPs, and all of them give you the internet box and the TV box. Sometimes they're the same one, but they provide you with the TV service as well in the same way that cable television does uh, in France and in, in the US. So basically, Netflix will have a very difficult time uh, uh, having a successful business if they don't manage to get on those boxes. And well, one of the ISPs, one of the main ISPs has agreed to get the, their app on the box. Others have not yet. And one of the... Um, uh, uh, one of the service providers, the historic one, Orange, uh, also has a channel, a series of channels that do movies and, and uh, TV shows, uh, some of which are popular on Netflix. So there's a, an interesting, you know, uh, confluence of uh, competition there. So we'll see what happens. Interesting. Uh, S oh, sorry. SP Sheridan posted the PC World story about research published in the journal Nat Nature Materials on Sunday, challenging the notion that slowly charging a battery and preventing fast di discharge helps prolong battery life. The researchers, led by Stanford's William Chua, found the evenness of the charging, not the speed, is a key factor and could decrease and could increase the useful life of a battery from a couple of years to a decade. The, the, they also uh, could use their findings, I'm sorry, I can't read today. They also could use their findings to allow faster discharging without damage. The researchers are engaging in further experiment to stimulate, to simulate typical use and are in talks with electronic companies. So what does that mean? We're going to get faster batteries because we are going to evenly charge the batteries? Yeah, they might charge yeah. faster uh, and they might be able to provide uh, bigger bursts of power as well, which would be especially good for car batteries, uh, for like, you know, electric mm. cars. Um, but yeah, this is this is pretty pretty fancy stuff here. Thank you, SP Sheridan. Mm. Captain Kipper passes along an Ars Technica write-up of some fine original reporting by Vox Media's Tim Lee and al analyzing the impact of the Supreme Court's ruling on patents back in June. Since that decision, there have been 11 federal judicial rulings striking down patents as abstract, which is a high number. Uh, the list only highlights patents that have lost under Section 101 of the U.S. Patent Law, which governs when a patent is an abstract idea that can't be patented. Many of the patents being knocked out are do-it-on-a-computer patents that take everyday activities and just add computer jargon. Uh, check out Tim Lee's article, though. It's good. It's linked in the show notes uh, for the full list of decisions. And that is a look at the headlines. Uh, real quickly, I just want to let folks know that I've, I, I do these novels mostly as a hobby, uh, and I usually write science fiction stuff, but this time I wrote a noir mystery. Uh, it's not Wind in the Willows, even though it has my two dogs as crime fighters. They never admit their dogs. It's more of a Raymond Chandler uh, take. But if, if you're interested at all, it's available in print. Uh, it's available for free as a PDF if you just want to try reading it, or you can get it uh, for all the ebook platforms like Nook and Kindle at tommeritbooks.com. All right, Patrick Beja. Uh, Microsoft's going to pay $2.5 billion. They're going to get Minecraft. The obvious reaction that 1996-era Tom Merritt has is this is awful and it's going to ruin Minecraft, which is exactly the reaction I had, I remember, when Microsoft bought Expedia. Um, hmm. That's funny. My, my first reaction was 
I was ready to pay 2.4. They <laughs> outbid me. They just outbid you. Uh, but really what this seems like is, is two things. One, Notch just not wanting to be involved anymore. I think the, the terms of service mm. fight is, is just one example. It's not the thing that forced him into this, but one example of the kind of thing where he's like, you know, I just want to make games. I don't want to be in charge of a very important company. Yeah. He wrote in his letter, uh, I don't want to be a symbol responsible for something huge that I don't understand, that I don't want to work on, that keeps coming back to me. I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm not a CEO. I'm a nerdy computer programmer who likes to have opinions on Twitter. Uh, he goes on and later in the in the letter, if I ever accidentally make something that seems to gain traction, I'll probably abandon it immediately. <laughs> uh, and he does say at the end, thank you for turning Minecraft into what it has become, but there are too many of you, and I can't be responsible for something this big. This really, to me, sounded very similar to what Don Gwain said about Flappy Bird. He wrote on Twitter, I can call Flappy Bird a success of mine, but it also ruins my simple life, so now I hate it. It feels like this is not saying the same thing. Yeah, kind of. I mean, uh, first of all, I'm happy when we had the discussion uh, with John Strickland on, on Wednesday. We sort of honed in on that. We, we were saying that it seemed like he was the kind, not just the kind of person who probably doesn't enjoy the this kind of pressure and attention. Uh, and he could very well sell off uh, Mojang or Mojang and uh, and go do other indie games just, just for fun. That's it seems that's what he wants to do. Um, I'm not sure about the comparison with, um, with um, oh, I'm blanking on his name. With Flappy um, Bird, Dong, yeah. Dong Wang. Dong Wang, yeah. Um, because in, in this case, it was a very immediate reaction that he had. Here, Notch has been at, at the helm of Minecraft for a long time. He actually doesn't work actively on Minecraft. He hasn't for, for a few years now. Um, but it, I guess what that... For me, what that brings uh, uh, attention to is that when you get that kind of into a huge uh, uh, ship like this, your job really changes in nature. And he was he, he is a developer and he was turned into, as he was saying, a CEO. And those are not the same thing. So I can completely understand that, you know, he doesn't really enjoy the job of, of being a CEO. He just wants to go do fun games and he has way more than enough money to, to do that comfortably for the rest of his life. Um, I can, it's the kind of, you know, the, the quest for success sort of tells us that if you have achieved that kind of thing and you have, you're at the head of this huge symbolic uh, company, why would you ever abandon it? But I think that's something I can, I can understand. It's a completely different thing. So if you don't enjoy it, why keep doing it? I, I feel like, and I, I don't know Notch at all, uh, but I feel like he seems he's showing some great self-awareness here. Uh, and, and when you say define success, I think what he's defining success for himself is when I'm enjoying my life. And I'm not enjoying my life trying to run Minecraft or trying to run Mojang. Uh, and so I'm not going to do that. And they, they made me stick around because they said oh, it was good for morale if you stick around around but he's got to the point where he's like that well that doesn't make any sense either like this this doesn't make any sense for me to be here noodling around with games which is what i love to do while other people are working on the main <laughs> purpose of the company now mm. what puzzles me is he was very critical of oculus being sold to facebook and he said some bad things about facebook uh he has also said things especially about the windows 8 store in the past uh that were critical of microsoft so I'm curious how yeah. we end up with Microsoft buying this or whether Notch cares. He may have been like, you know, whatever, sell it to whoever you want. You're the finance people. Just do it. I don't want to be involved anymore. Yeah, it seems well, it's he was expressing his opinion on a philosophical level. And now it's a practical thing right. where he's getting, you know, he's selling the company. And that's I mean, you can't fold him for wanting to sell the company that he doesn't feel related to anymore in his day to day. So I don't think it's it's that I understand that philosophically it's difficult to reconcile. But when you look at the practicalities of it, it's very easy to understand the, the more difficult thing to understand, uh, maybe is 
the the price seems pretty high for uh, as an absolute it's a lot of money and is microsoft basically the reasons why microsoft is making this deal can the game has been out for a long time already and i'm not going to comment you know too much on it because i'm still for another few weeks uh, into the industry but um it is it has sold a lot uh, already it's it doesn't seem like it's on the up uh, swing of its uh, product cycle so what do they see in it certainly they see something in it um, yeah i thought it would be fun to to try and guess why they're paying that much money for an ex incredibly successful uh, franchise well and keep still. in mind they paid 8.5 billion for skype uh mm -hmm. they're only paying 2.5 billion for minecraft now it's a video game versus versus a platform essentially or is it i feel like mm -hmm. microsoft's making the bet that minecraft is a platform uh and that it's it's appeal I mean, when you go when you go to the Xbox store, you don't just see buy Minecraft for twenty dollars. You see buy Minecraft for twenty dollars and buy this paint pack for five dollars and buy this 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 skin for this much. And sure, you can make a lot of that stuff yourself. You don't have to buy it, but a lot of people don't want to. So there's there's cash to be made there. There's also the fact that this you know again Microsoft's making a bet. This could be like Lego in that it never does have a peak. It just continues to go forward with people using it and developing it and making fun things out of it because it's not a game with lore and a story. It is a more open-ended thing that says, do whatever you want with it. And Microsoft's betting that people have not exhausted the things that they can do with it. And it fits right in with what Satya Nadella has been steering Microsoft to become, product and services, right? We don't tie Office to Windows anymore, says Microsoft. We make it available on the iPad. We make it available for Android. And so Minecraft doesn't have to be tied to the Xbox. They can continue, They can make it available for the PlayStation because it is part of that way of thinking. Like, we want to be successful in lots of different places. And uh, Microsoft makes money on Android phones through patents, for example. That that no, isn't yeah. necessary. Well, it's not the same thing. I understand. Maybe not. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I really like the the, the comparison with Lego. Um, Minecraft is really something that is uh, actually that's the, the we use and a lot of people use. It's it's sort of a virtual uh, Lego. Uh, toy kind of thing. It's not exactly the same thing, but there are similarities in the way you express your uh, creativity and things like that. And of course, they could keep it as is, but it could also become uh, a, a, a platform, as, as you were saying, for more things. Maybe they could license some other IPs to be embedded in Minecraft without Halo necessarily edition. getting to. <laughs> I've already seen. Well, you know, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Lego does a lot of uh, uh, franchises, you know, other, you have Lego Lord Absolutely. of the Rings, Lego Marvel, Lego, and Minecraft, I think it could actually work uh, pretty well with that kind of uh, spirit. Maybe not necessarily exactly that, but it could be. It could still be true to the game. But you could have, you know, just maybe sets or special editions, or uh, take the Minecraft engine and technology and evolve it into something a little bit more specialized for uh, uh, other uh, uh, companies, for example. Or, or you know, there, there's definitely a huge potential there. So it's interesting to to think about what they could do with it. Yeah, before we get off uh, of this topic, I, I want to I wanna get your opinion about how successful you think this will end up being. I'm going to throw my, my theory out first, uh, and that is Microsoft can really ruin this. The, the internet outrage is in some ways undeserved, but there are things Microsoft could do to ruin this. They could uh, really crack down on the independent servers, much more so than the terms of service do. Uh, they could get into that intellectual property game you were just describing in a way that stops people from making mods. Uh, they could bring a lot of copyright and Microsoft-y bureaucratic stuff that would, would really be bad for this audience. I don't think it's a given that they will. I think Phil Spencer has shown, since he has taken over the Xbox, that he is much more in tune with what the audience wants. So let's, let's just kind of leave that as undecided. Maybe Microsoft will screw some stuff up, maybe they won't, but it looks like maybe he won't is at least a good possibility. If that's okay, then this is going to be good for players because they will have many more resources out there devoted to developing and expanding Minecraft. This is going to be good for Notch and Carl 
because uh, and and I I, I don't want to leave out uh, Jacob either. It's going to be good for them because they get to go off and do their own thing and start from scratch and not be bothered uh, by the legacy here. And it's it's going to be good for gaming because it's going to be it's if they hold to their word a cross platform. Uh, game that is supported by a major institution now and and sorts sort of gets out of this idea of like a game is tied to a console yeah i mean it definitely th there are going to be microsoft bureaucratic moves i think it's it's obviously going to happen with a purchase with a, a, a purchase like this but um the the, the key thing i'm remembering in this situation is that Microsoft in the gaming space is getting a bad rap with gamers right now. And I don't think they can afford to to impact yes. Minecraft in a way that would get gamers angry. And Spencer, as you were saying, Phil Spencer seems like he's very in tune with that, uh, the importance of that uh, that perception. So it would surprise me if they screwed it up at least you know in the next few years after that who knows who's going to be in charge and all of that but yeah yeah all right let's move on to the calendar uh tomorrow september 16th rules for testing autonomous vehicles on california public roads go into effect the new rules require all self-driving cars to have a steering wheel brakes an accelerator and five million dollars of insurance in response, Google has added a temporary steering wheel to its self-driving car and has asked the DMV to clarify their rule on testing the car in a matrix-like simulation of California's entire road system because Google has one of those now. <laughs> Uh, the Moto X and a few other things will be up for pre-order in the U.S. starting tomorrow, September 16th. Uh, the Moto X on AT&T will be $99 on a two-year contract, while the off-contract Pure Edition will run you $500. Bucks. The Moto Hint and turbocharger accessories will also be available, and the Moto 360 smartwatch will be back in stock. All four products go on sale from 12 Eastern through Motorola.com. Uh, Microsoft, just before the show, announced a Windows 9 event in San Francisco on September 30th. The invitation reads, join us to hear what's next for Windows and the Enterprise. And it's on a blue background. Mm. What and do you and think look it at means? the font, Tom. Look at the font. It's a sans serif font. Hmm. Is that All Cabrilli? Right. <laughs> uh, uh, Calibri? Calibri? I don't know. Something yes, that's Italian. What I mean. Tomorrow, earnings for Adobe <laughs> will be released. Uh, and here come the conferences. Starting today, the At Scale Conference in San Francisco for engineers who build scalable platforms. September 15th to the 16th is the Games Beat Conference in San Francisco. 15th through the 17th is O'Reilly Velocity in New York City. That's about web operations. And September 15th through the 19th is the IT Dev Connections Conference. Conference Las Vegas. Tomorrow is the Techonomy Detroit Conference about ways technology can boost U.S. economic growth. September 16th to the 17th is Ethernet World in Nice, France, and the Bank of America Merrill Lynch 2014 Media Communications and Entertainment Conference in Beverly Hills, California. September 16th through the 18th is the Ad Tech Tokyo Conference. September 16th through the 19th is AppSec USA in Denver, Colorado, which focuses on software security. And finally, September 16th through the 21st is Photokina in Cologne, Germany, which covers aspects of taking a picture in the digital age. We saw a bunch of cameras released today. And that is a lot of conferences. Our pick of the day comes from Don Quixote. Spelled that way. I'm not <laughs> mispronouncing it this time. Uh, digital offerings from the public library. He says, your public library has audiobooks and ebooks for free. Just go into the library and sign up. They give you credentials, and voila, you have access to countless books. My local library is part of the Overdrive lending system, and it works great for me. Do they have that in France? Uh, honestly, I, I You don't should know. look into it. They might. Say, I, yes, I love the concept, the idea of libraries, uh, and I think they should exist for sure and keep existing and modernizing. But I can't remember the last time I've been to one. QNX Monkey says that the uh, Moto X will not go on sale at 12 Eastern. It was an error on the Moto site. Actually, it's 11 Pacific. I'm just going to trust QNX Monkey there. I'm, I don't have a second source. <laughs> uh, Take yeah. it as written. I think you, you, we should always trust QNX Monkey. I got a good North track things. record. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. Send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com, and you can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. Uh, one message. We're running a little longer today because we had fun talking about Mojang. Uh, but while I was away, there was some discussion about the need to carry your phone while you're using an Apple Watch uh, and, then, and what that would mean when you're tracking your run. 
Uh, Michelle Hunt writes in and says, the discussion seemed to imply that having to carry the phone was a bad thing. I disagree. I run and I carry my phone with me always, and so do most of the people I know, especially women. It's partially a safety thing. Don't want to be out on the trail running alone and not have a phone. But also my phone is my music player and I run to music if I'm on a trail. Finally, many people carry their phones because they already use the apps that use the phone GPS to track distance. Apps like RunKeeper and others are on your phone nowhere else. Even my Garmin Forerunner 620, a great running watch, by the way, uses my phone to broadcast my location to people I send the info to, like my husband and family during the race. So having to carry your phone with you when you run is kind of a given for a lot of people and not a detraction at all. To which I yeah. want to know, what do you need but, to watch for then? I guess for the pulse, <laughs> it does the health stuff. Huh? Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, it's exactly that. The, 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 you, you use the, basically, Michelle, what you're saying is you use the phone because you have to use the phone. I think what some people were expecting it was, wouldn't it be cool if we didn't have to use the phone? Which, of course, they're doing now. Uh, and they, I, what it comes down to is, uh, Michelle, you don't mind using the phone. Others apparently do. Yeah, I actually am one of those people who doesn't mind uh, having a phone in my pocket when I run. But I understand that that's uh, annoying to a lot of other people. And uh, if I were one of those people, I would want the watch to be able to do all that yeah. stuff, including play the music and Bluetooth headphones. Yeah. And that'd be amazing. Yeah. I get it. I didn't think about the safety thing, though. That was Yeah, that's an interesting uh, point. Yeah. Uh, and thanks for the, the email, Michelle. Appreciate that. Feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com. Uh, well, that is it. Patrick Beja, La Rendezvous Tech, Frenchspin.com, uh, and of course here on Daily Tech News Show about once a week, starting now. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 the day may shift around, but but we'll try to we'll try to keep it pretty stable yeah. at once a week. Uh, what what else you got going on to let folks know about? Well, you pretty much summed it up. I just uh, wanted to say that uh, over the weekend, I broke 20,000 uh, followers on Twitter. And I think some of those might be listeners from the Daily Tech News Show. So uh, welcome, everyone, to a festival of uh, cats with lasers and uh, other tweets that will be mildly, mildly interesting. That's four and times the number of people me. in my hometown when I was growing up. Now follow oh, you on tw Twitter. That means something. <laughs> thank you, Patrick. No, but thank you, seriously, th thank you very much for following me. I hope I don't disappoint you. Uh, thanks to our 4,275 patrons uh, who make the show possible. I hope you all saw that I, I threw a little bonus audio segment in the uh, Patreon email. If you saw a Patreon email and ignored it, that's, that's what that was over the weekend. But really appreciate uh, everybody who supports the show. And because it's, it's mid-month, I want to remind people that if your credit card number changed or something, you may not be a Patreon even though you think so. And if you don't want to be anymore, that's fine. Uh, but you might want to check <laughs> and update that information if it has changed. Uh, there's lots of ways to support the show, though. Go to dailytechnewsshow.com slash donate to find them all. Don't forget, you can have a voice in what stories we cover at our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. You can email us feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Give us a call, 512-59-DAILY. That's 512-593-2459. And listen to the show live at mobile.alphageekradio.com. Visit our website at dailytechnewsshow.com. We'll be back tomorrow with Andrea Smith as our guest. See you then. You didn't say spicy meat the ball. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I'm disappointed. It's a spicy phone sim. <laughs> Actually, Andrea and I are going to talk, uh, going to compare our experiences with uh, sim cards and Wi Fi in foreign lands because she was in, oh. in Germany and Austria uh, covering IFA. <laughs> Um, when you when you come to the U.S., what do you do for your phone service? <laughs> I use my company phone, which you just, I won't be able to You just to roam? Do oh, okay. Yeah. But um, actually, I have to ask you stuff at some point. Okay. <laughs> like, will I no, pay I mean, for your roaming charges? <laughs> is what it seems to be that you're Yes, already. yes. I, I, actually... Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, no, I, I warn you as a as an employee that this position does not come with a free phone. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even for me. Yeah.
<laughs> but I don't understand. I, I, yes, <laughs> I thought we had discussed this. <laughs> um, it clearly states in my contract. <laughs> Wait, contract? Mm-hmm. You have a contract? Um, I signed it for a moral time. contract. It's like a, it's like right. a. It's sort of like a, you know, the rights of man sort of contract. <laughs> well, it's I the think the declaration that that of the case, rights of man. In yeah. that case, I, I am clearly entitled to having a yeah, right? roaming star. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Separated from my body here shortly. Um, <laughs> Would you like um, some titles? Oh, oh yeah, titles. Yeah. What's the, hey. the robot name again? Uh, Showbot.replex.org. <laughs> Showbot. Oh, there my you go. My name is Showbot. Um, so oh, uh, Tom, you yes. were you were uh, cutting off a little bit uh, during the show. I don't know if uh, people. I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. you were you were. It was unstable. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know why unstable. that would be. It, it would and... be interesting to uh, listen to the Google Hangout when it right. generates and hear where that was originating. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, it wasn't. Time. It was just I did notice it. Uh, I did the the, the the patented producer flinch uh, a couple times during the show. Um, Great, okay. thanks. <laughs> Good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> it was purely technical. Uh, the content was amazing. No, okay. now you're doing it, and I'm not even yeah. kidding. Yeah. Yeah, you are. No, yep. you're doing. You're you guys are doing it. Yep. Oh, me too. Yeah. No. <laughs> really? Well, YouTube. Which makes me think. It's codex. It's thing. Netflix. No, it's not. Yeah. It makes me think it's not a bandwidth issue. That mm. it's a, uh, it's a Hangout codec. Oh, are they moving to like VP9 and doing? Well, stuff they that added work? a new thing today called applause. I noticed oh. when I launched it, and whenever oh, yeah, they, they add added new... that, they added that last week, and uh, uh, I was afraid of it, so I didn't mention it on the show. <laughs> Whenever they add so, new things, what's it, applause? Oh, it lets you do like real time feedback about That's the show. That's just what the show needs is more real time feedback. We already have a method. No, for that. we do we actually. We I don't want people to think <laughs> that that we don't want their feedback. We absolutely do. Um, um, no, absolutely do. But it's it's basically just a thumbs up, thumbs down tracker. Oh. It's like it's like um, political tracking. During yeah, it's like, like the debates. Oh, yeah. okay. Which to me is not quite as. Um, it's not the real time tracking I would like. I like the real time tracking we have, which is a group of people in a chat room saying, Hey, something happened. This happened, you know, or what the hell. Mm. So I don't know. I like my tracking in sentences, not thumbs. That's just my, uh, that's my. Question. I don't think it's a bad thing though. If people want to try it out, yeah. I'm all for trying stuff out. Yeah. Uh, anybody want a title? Yes. The, uh, clear, uh, vote getter. Uh, is Mo Jang Mo Money or Mo Yang Mo Money, uh, which by from Tinbeck. Uh, BioCow had free U2 no thank you. Uh, FCC no comment on your comments. Uh, Beatmaster had the tyranny of free. And uh, I did like Hawkwood's no Mo Jang. Uh, top I did notch. feel a little bit tyrannized uh, yeah. by the, the thing. Tyranny yeah. of free. Uh, top notch billions. Ah, I get it. Notch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mojangi, Mo problems. <laughs> it's working uh, hard. It's working hard for it's, that joke. It's working hard. I did have one. Oh, uh, Beatmaster had one Mojang notchless, which I liked a lot. Hmm. Um, and then Mojang less U2. <laughs> That's clever. CSA03. Yeah. Always He's clever. He's a title bot. He's a title bot. Mojang Mo Money oh. works for me, though. Yeah. And I think it should yeah. be a Mojang or Mo Young title. Yeah, I agree. Um, so there's that. That's what I got. Jenny hates thumbs. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Jenny gives thumbs down to thumbs. Oh, thank you, Paul Gannon. Le rendez-vous DTNS. And welcome, Aww. not Patrick. Oh, thank you. Bienvenue. Thank you. I had to make Je sure I spelled it right. Baguette. <laughs> baguette, what? Yeah, we have exhausted my French. Je oh. voudrais what? un baguette. Oh, well, I would like one too. I can't Bien eat sûr. it, though. Because I'm uh, gluten intolerant. Oh, 
no, that is maybe the worst country in the world to be gluten Yes, I know. So, so, no, so, a friend of mine's coming into town. Uh, speaking of gluten intolerance, you'll see why. He's coming into town tomorrow, and my other friend's like, "Hey, he's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be here. We should all go out to eat." I'm like, "Great." And she's like, "I'm trying to save money though. Like, so maybe pizza and beer." I'm like, "Yeah, it sounds great." She's like, "Although I'm a vegetarian and he's gluten intolerant." <laughs> I'm like, "Gluten free vegetarian pizza and beer." <laughs> <laughs> they they uh, actually have uh, gluten free pizza um, and gluten free beer. And gluten-free beer? I haven't yeah. seen that one. But the, In the fact, veg- I bought the-, the gluten-free beer to see what it tasted like, and it had a BB on it, so Brushwood was drinking it every time he came mm. over because he's like, that's my logo. <laughs> it's actually not terrible. I've tried it. Yeah. I finally found some, some decent uh, gluten-free bread, but for a few months there, I was yeah. suffering. Um, but yeah, it's temporary. Although, when I when I first started a, a year and a half ago or two years ago, it was gluten, milk, eggs, cola, mm. like everything. So basically I could not eat bread or cheese. Ugh. So that was, as you can imagine, painful. You got, you might as yeah. well move to America. You, you go to the corner store and you can't eat, buy anything. Yes, exactly. It was challenging. A lot of rice. Um, calendar things. Uh, next week... What's happening next week? Next week is fine. We can do Tuesday. Yes. That's what we had said, right? Yep. Um, the week after, it's Tuesday 30th. It shouldn't be an issue, but I'm coming back from a trip to Finland uh, okay. for a wedding. And my plane is landing at 6. So I will... I, mm. I'm not a thousand... I, it, there's a like 2% chance it's going to be delayed or you know, so I'm not going to have time to... So we can either put you on... Basically, what we'll do is you'll be invited to this show on the 30th, and okay. if you can make it, that's great. If not, we could I could just book you for the next day, the first, if that's better. Um, I don't know. I we could depends on whether you want to hang out with Molly Wood or not. That's basically what it comes down I to. I always want to hang out with Molly Wood. Yeah. So <laughs> why don't we? How? Why don't we? Um, why don't we just keep you on that day while you know in your mind that there's no pressure because Molly is on also that day. So it's not like okay. we would be bereft of a guest. All right. But um, if, it, if it, whatever works for you, yeah. you know, I'm at your yeah. service. So, all right. Yeah, well, we as can soon as you, you know, as soon as you um, are official, 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 then uh, I'll just start calling you when, you know, things fall through. Um, do you have other dates after that? When I in October don't think yet, so, or you no. Don't know? No, okay. I think after that it works pretty well until... Um, well, until BlizzCon, really, but even then, right. uh, should so be fine. So can I literally put you down on Tuesdays till the end of time, and then you'll write me when that's not good? I think that can work, yes. I love it. This is like the best day of my life right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Here comes Patrick. All right. Copy that, and I can, I can make you a recurring Tuesday event. <gasps> that is amazing. amazing. Repeats weekly and never. <laughs> <laughs> What's a good French word that begins with T? With T? Yeah. Um, like I, I was German, I'd say it's Teatonic Tuesdays. But that's oh, right. Okay. Um, uh, hmm. Tricolore Tuesdays. Oh. oh. I'm not sure why it's tricolore, but maybe. Do you have well, a tricolore? Let, let me have a think about it. All right. Yes. You don't. Um, that's the flag, uh, right? Isn't it tricolor? Yeah, 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 yeah. But oh, so you mean for yeah? But I guess. But Thomas, uh, pa- yeah. uh, Patrick is so much more than just his flag. It's so true. <laughs> it's very <laughs> true. <laughs> I do more like than just his flags. country. Like, He's like, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's like your flag's the same three colors, Merritt. That's what I was going to say. But you know, <laughs> actually, I'm pretty sure you stole them from us. Yeah, it's possible. Yes. Likely, uh, yes. And the British could theoretically be losing their blue. We'll find out Thursday. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Thursday. I'm obsessed with this story. Well, like, it is pretty important. It's huge. Um, and and honestly, I don't know if you saw. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you saw the um, the late 
the last week tonight with John Oliver last night, but he, with an assist from CBS News' Mark Phillips, did probably the best job breaking it down that I've seen. Like, that show is tremendous. Um, so, yeah, it's really quite something. Oh, did All I right. go away? No, 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 you're here. Oh. We're, we're, Nobody had you know, anything to say about Scotland. We I'm sorry. I have a lot to say about Scotland. You were editing. I was, I was just editing. editing. That's fine. Patrick is refraining from opinion, which is very polite. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the Scots know. and the French are historically allies. I know they're absolutely. Excuse me, this girl. I don't read. want. I don't want to say too much because book. I don't want to, you know, influence the vote. Uh, <laughs> I saw what happened with the with, with the, the FCC thing, and uh, right. when we we were uh, encouraging people to to go and post comments, and the thing exploded like three yeah. million. They were saying like, like I was in uh, just before, and then we come on and the and three million. So, uh, Scots. Vote with your own conscience. Conscience, yeah. you know. Don't my, don't look to me for for what to do. My question, my immediate question, was what would happen to Balmoral, um, which is like basically the queen's heart and oh, soul well, location. The Nothing queen, really. No, because the queen She'll will remain, remain the, yeah. the head of state. Poss Unless there's they, a possibility that they could yeah. become a republic, but the idea is not that they. Uh, that would be even more difficult. So, the like Canada. She's still the queen, so yeah. Yeah, so it'd be interesting. I think it's it's one of those things that like, wow. Yeah, and it's not oh like they're gonna even if you know something happens, it's not like they're gonna stop her at the border. Like I think Bruce <laughs> S. I think Bruce S. has a good one. Magnifique Mardi. Oh, oh I like it. Uh, Lisa is saying très bien Tuesday. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that works as well. Okay. But yeah. Magnifique Mardi is, is actually, well, uh, I love alliteration. Yeah. So it's, yeah. if it fits him too, it's, uh, yeah. Brilliant. Mardi Beja. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, or yeah. you make it like really almost creepy and it's like Les Mardi Magnifique and it feels very like. <laughs> Le Mardi Magnifique. Like American a, French, like let's find like something. Like an unlisted that uh, bar in the basement somewhere <laughs> in the 21st arrondissement. Uh, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Is it I just make that up? No, no, it's it is. Oh, uh, 21st? No, it goes to yeah, 20. It goes to but, 20. Um, that's what I've been more skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. We can we can make a twenty first one for yeah. you. We we'll we'll do a vote like the Scots and we'll have part of the a nice one like the sixteenth. Smidge from the nineteenth uh, to the twentieth and yeah. the twenty first. No, those ones are like farther away. Not the best not ones. The best one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna get like yeah. hate mail from people who live there. Um, I should now that I'm uh, what's what's the the word uh, uh, an official co-host or yeah. No, what is what, your title? Does oh. Tom? Does he have a title? Sure. Official uh, contributor, contributor. I mean, you put DTNS contributor in the doc, so that's why yeah, I read I that. Yeah, I just made that up. Yeah, you, you can make up whatever you want, Patrick. Because I was yeah. I was thinking like unicorn uh, murder. Uh, co for example, co-host. Like, there's lots of co-hosts, but that, so I, I I have to be like an official co-host. Right. But right. then that's the fair. the show is 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 daily, and I'm not daily right. so you're not a guest host like, you're not a guest yeah exactly yeah but and so but i would have to be a weekly co-host because uh -huh. i'm not here all the time right so week official weekly co-host extraordinaire or something like that could we right. make but, could we uh, knight you and make you a knight of the ooh. deep Dan oh no that's taken that's sort of a mm. taken concept oh, okay I well no agenda does the knighthoods yeah and we might mm. want to steal that from them yeah, well, I'm sure know. we'll be hearing about it. I'm <laughs> kidding. Um, let's see. Uh, foreign uh, correspondent. What is, uh, yeah, well, that's another but the, one. But chief foreign European, correspondent, would you like foreign to be correspondent, correspondent doesn't, oh, chief European, that's good. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't give the, the um, weekly, like, I'm here every week um, what aspect. About it's like Asia, comma, one of us. <laughs> Chief of our Paris bureau. Yeah. Oh man, that is a coveted job in my circle. Paris bureau yeah, yeah, chief. I think it is in deal. everyone's circles. Yeah. We'll keep. We'll keep. We'll keep. We'll keep uh, yeah. We'll keep yeah, trying we'll, them out we'll, till one. Maybe. Fits. Maybe we could crowd. Uh, uh, crowdsource it. 
Yeah, Co- well, Commissar. Already, yeah, QNX has Commissar de Technologie. De Technologie. <laughs> oh, man, poor Patrick. You're going to have to endure a lot of poor French. Commissar. It's Commissar de Technologie. Commissar. But I was thinking more de Commissar when I started raising it, which is not French, but still, you know, how cool would that be if your title was de Commissar? Yeah. And when you what visit, you're in town. I, I don't know what is the. the oh, would you like? So. It sounds Vicomte? German. A Vicomte? Oh, Vicomte. Vicomte. Yes, I like. Vicomte. Yeah. <laughs> Vicomte. <laughs> Vicomte. Sort of but I, I don't know how. Although you know the the the, the nobles don't tend to end well in in my yeah, sense. So not sure that. That's... Let the Minecraft players eat cake. <laughs> <laughs> Let them eat the brown blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, uh, we will carry we'll this on. Out. Yes, we'll we will carry this on. We'll uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. It's good to be back. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the shows. Well, as God, it means a lot to be that people were willing to fill in and that you guys uh, thought they were great. So thank you again. See you tomorrow. We'll